a week ago, I posted up or stated here on the Manning Report that Starbucks coffee shops were ground zero for Ebola. And I documented such both scientifically and factually, uh, especially within urban areas where people like Dr. Craig Spencer and other very elitist type but young professional sodomites uh, find it the chic thing to do uh, to be seen in Starbucks with a $9 latte and a very expensive uh, either laptop or iPad. And as a result of that, uh, Ebola is uh, quite contagious at Starbucks. And I pointed up this Dr. Craig Spencer right here in New York, lied to the uh, police department stating where he had been since he had returned from Liberia. Uh, he attended this seedy uh, bowling alley in Brooklyn called the gutter, a very, very seedy place, but a place where sodomites hang out and he also walked along the High Line, and I'm not gonna take the time to tell you what that is, and attended a coffee shop there as well. Um, and so we pointed up that uh, Starbucks is a ground zero for Ebola, and you need to stay away from there because many sodomites like to hang out in that watering hole. And Huffington Post picked it up, and you know other newspapers picked it up as well, and. Uh, and so this past Sunday, the sodomites and came with large quantities of Starbucks coffee and, and Starbucks bags and stood out in front of our church and gave out free coffee and bags to the passers-by. And they were chanting, stop the hate. And Manning is a hate preacher and this is a hate church. And they went on carrying on for hours out there in front of our church. And now several, and I, then I responded by talking about uh, the fact that Starbucks uh, and had been posted up in the Inquis Inquisitor online service that Starbucks uses uh, a male semen, preferably sodomite semen and specimens thereof uh, as a part of the ingredients that they put in their lattes. Now this was posted up in uh, Inquisitor online service, which is a very reputable online service. Uh, to give flavor to his lattes, and people are actually, they're able to have oral sex simply by drinking a cup of very expensive latte and get the final results of a man's semen in the process. And the mystery of the semen is, is that it really makes them feel very good. And I pointed up years ago how Coca-Cola first got started by putting actual cocaine into its drink and people were getting high on the farm in the uh, early days of the uh, Coca-Cola marketing and the FDA finally came into being and uh, restricted them from doing that, but they still have a synthetic Coca-Cola and nobody knows the secret of it. But I want to also point up if you've ever watched the bucket list with Morgan Freeman and Jack Nicholas and Jack Nicholas had bragged about how he was drinking this very expensive coffee because he was a billionaire and could afford it. It was the best coffee in the world. And Morgan Freeman, a mechanic, but a historian, was able to determine that the coffee beans that were used uh, in this very expensive coffee, coffee beans they had picked up in the Amazon after monkeys ate the beans but did not chew them, and the beans then marinated for days in the monkey's intestine amid all the other feces in the monkey's intestines. And the beans would then soak in the fluids and the juices from the monkey's feces, and he would then poop them out. And that's how and what made the coffee taste so good. This is the absolute truth from the bucket list. And I'm going to let you listen to the clip of Mar Morgan Freeman and uh, Jack Nicholas from the bucket list. Roll that clip. Read it. Kopi Luwak is the world's most expensive coffee, though for some it falls under the category of too good to be true. In the Sumatran village where the beans are grown lives a breed of wild tree cat. These cats eat the beans, digest them, and then defecate. The villagers then collect and process the stools. 
It is the combination of the beans and the gastric juices of the tree cat that give Kopi Luwak its unique flavor and aroma. What Starbucks has done is that they have been collecting semen uh, and mainly from sodomites and they have, a, uh, they have come out in favor of same-sex unions and they have found a way to blend the semen into just a bit of it into their lattes and it just gives a great taste. Uh, the, the zygotes in the male semen makes the coffee taste exquisite. Uh, and Kopi Luak's coffee was designed by these cats that poop out the coffee beans. We wanted to point that up. As a result of that, our church is under attack. Every two or three minutes, the phone rings with some sodomite from somewhere in the world uh, calling and saying all kinds of ugly things, cursing us out, using vulgar language. The young women have to pick up the phones. This has been going on now for the last week. We have appeared, Huffington Post carried the article, and uh, a number of uh, mainline online services have carried articles. We're going to post all of them up uh, regarding my bringing to light the truth about Starbucks, about sodomites, about Ebola, and about the, uh, the coffee and what makes it so expensive and what, uh, and, and, and why America needs to be made aware of this. But I also want to state that our church is under attack by the sodomites. They call me a hate preacher. They write and tell me that God loves homosexuals, that God loves the gay practice. They tell me that God is gay. And they tell me I'm just mean and hate-filled and that uh, everybody in this church is going to hell and I'm going to hell. Uh, but I'm not going to quit preaching the truth, and I'm going to get as much of this out, and I'm asking you to help me get these messages out, videos to every person you possibly can, because by this time next year, Obama's greatest accomplishment has not been Obamacare, but has been he has turned the universal way that men have conducted their human behavior over the past 10,000 years since men have walked upright on earth. Obama has reversed that. For the past 10,000 years, as men have walked upright on earth, it has, been, it has been man and woman, the creation process that also allows for the reproduction and the continuance of the planet's population. Obama has been able now to actually release demons that have now convinced people from the kindergarten school teachers, principals, judges, governors, politicians, business per purchase persons, entrepreneurs, that that model of man and woman is outdated. Though it has guided humanity for 10,000 years, anyone who simply refers to that now is referring to an outdated, outmoded way for humanity to proceed. And he has succeeded at that, which is a mighty effort of, on his behalf. It's more uh, sweeping than Obama care. It is his greatest accomplishment. But I stand on the word of God. I will not be intimidated by the phone calls. I will not be intimidated by the pastors and the churches who have looked the other way. I will not be intimidated by the fact that people will turn me off because I stand on the word of God. I stand united with humanity over the past 10,000 years. I will not join this Johnny come, late, come lately perversion of the humanities going forward with man and man. I'm James David Manning, everybody. I'm the Lord, sir.